I can play video games really well. That's a yep. nerdy example. <laughs> I can play video games really well. How many Fortnite dubs? Um, not as many as I don't want to say okay. because it's very very low. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, I can play video games very very well. I have not been anointed to play video games. Mm. I've been anointed to do worship. I've been anointed to minister to people. And once you think, okay, I'm doing what God has anointed me to do, God's going to take over. Yep. Now, there is a part in you where you have to agree to the anointing. You mm. have to say, all right, God, you have anointed me to do this. I'm going to rest in that anointing and let you carry on out. But I still have to agree to it. I still have to be active in it. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to sit down here. I'm just going to like, all right, God, work. <laughs> do it. Yes. You know, come on. Come on, do something. But right. it's like, okay, I have to be active in my faith. Yeah. You know, I have to be active in the stuff that I do to carry it to help. Not not to help God. That's that's not a good thing to say. Because <laughs> God can do whatever he wants. Yeah. But I have to be active in what I do so that when the time comes for God to take me to that next level in my anointing, mm-hmm. I can you know, be there. I can be there. I can do the things I need to do. And with me and with my guitar, it's like, I'm really seeing this. It's like, because when the first time I played um, at church with just leading electric, I thought, oh my goodness, I am overwhelmed right now. <laughs> and then that really thinks like, you know, got in my head. It's like, you know, you're gonna have to get better. Yeah. But the thoughts that were bad were the thoughts of Caden, you didn't do this well. Mm. You are not good enough. Yeah. You know, you, you know, haven't done well. Like those thoughts that are from the enemy that, you know, really brought me down. That's where I felt, oh my goodness, you know, I need to get better. But it's like, yeah, you, you may need to get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you may need to get better. But don't think that you're not where God wants you right now. Mm. That's, that's, where, that's where I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. God wants you right here, right now for a specific purpose. Don't think in the future. Don't think of what you've done. Think of right now, where does God want me? Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's a big thing with my stewardship is like, even if you think you failed in the past, even if you think, oh, I'm not where I should be. Yeah. No, God has you right where he wants you to be. Yeah. And that, that's a big thing for me in stewardship. So. Yeah. That's been a big thing for me. And I'll bring it back to my um, job because I just have been learning so much mm-hmm. through it recently, especially um, I'm a decent tennis player and I've had that same line of thought coming through my head in terms of man, I've been playing now for, oh, almost 10 years, Mm -hmm. you know? And for somebody who's been playing for 10 years and who knows the game as well as I know it, I feel a lot of times as if I should be better than where I am, that I probably could be competing at a different level instead of coaching the level that I'm at. Mm -hmm. But first of all, some of that just stems from pride and thinking that I'm better than I am Mm -hmm. um, and thinking that just because I put in more work and because I theoretically would be less like less lazy about my tennis career you yeah. know that I would automatically be blessed by the Lord and that it would automatically be fruitful and I would automatically have more wins and tournament experience that mm-hmm. I wouldn't just automatically implode because I'm pursuing it out of my own volition as opposed to with God's providence and his grace yeah. you know but it's also um, something that I've truly had to reconcile with to myself because I can I can continue down that line of thought but it doesn't have a happy ending. And that's really what I figured out is just it doesn't lead anywhere prosperous. Yeah. And so you have two options. You can continue down that line of thought and say, man, I should be here. I would be here. I could be here. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, but you didn't. Mm. You know, God has you where he has you right yeah. now. And where he has me now is with um, currently three or four because it's our state qualifiers. But before seven and before that, 12 or 11 amazing sons and daughters of him Mm. you know and he has given me oh six to eight hours a week occasionally more when there's a tournament to love them and encourage them the best way that i can not necessarily even to to lead them or make them the best tennis players in Mm -hmm. the world because i think that just comes second or it has to come second because if i spent all my time and energy just looking at their forehands then i'm missing you know the way they look on a Tuesday afternoon when they've had to make up a biology test and a math test Mm. and they haven't had sleep in the past two days because there's something else going on with their family and they and they gotta you know there's something else going on and I can't look at them and hold them to the same standard of accountability that I would you know the week before Mm. at the district or the regional tournament because they're just different that day I think there's a difference between you know I'll 
try to make this as succinct as possible. They say to treat every player equally, which is true, but mm -hmm. treating people equally and treating people fairly is very different because wow. everybody is different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you treat everybody equally and if you're the same top-down authoritarian coach or dictator or leader or pastor or, you know, worship um, musician, mm -hmm. then that gets you so far and there's value and consistency, but you also lose that individual relationship and that individual dynamic between you and oh, I can't use their names, but you know, you and John, you and Sally, you and, you know, Mark, you lose that special bit of the relationships that makes things better. Right before I had um, the regional tournament, I guess it was last week now, I wanted to do something kind of special for the kids, yeah. not over the top, but I wanted mm -hmm. to give them a little pep talk to say, hey, we're going to study Gideon. It was to kind of go through, you know, humility and confidence and, and all the stuff that yeah. was in there. But after that, I kind of gave them each an envelope and that just had a letter from me to them saying, hey, tomorrow, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do because all the kids' letters were different. This is what I want you to work on. I want you to think about. And as I was writing them, I had to pick apart their brain because wow. I have I had and I had a kid I still do uh, a kid who played basketball a kid who played baseball a kid who played football um, a girl who's in cheer um, people who are more academic and so I would phrase things mm -hmm. or just you know use my limited knowledge of those disciplines to try to put things into a different perspective and at least two or three of them, them came up to me the next day during the tournament and said that yeah. makes so much sense now. And it's wow. stuff I've been telling them all year for some of them the past two years, mm. but I finally sat down at a computer and had the time and the space to think, gosh, how could I phrase this so that it makes sense to them? And so all during that tournament, I was talking about attacking the quarterback. Mm. I was talking about, you know, think light for the cheerleader, because not that she's a flyer, but thinking about how you want to be light, you know, and not tense or tight, how mm. everything kind of has analogous or you know synonymous parts in other sports things that they love that can connect them to the situation they're in right now mm. um and that'll go off into a, a deeper tangent than i wanted to but the point being um back to back to leadership and back to just um dynamic leadership being able to look at individuals and see what is this person's strength what is this person's weakness what does this person need again how do i market this information to them in a way how do i coach them in a way that is going to mold them specifically into an individual who is closer to Christ than they were an hour before practice, wow. you know, and I don't do a great job of that. I'll be the first to admit about like, just about every single day I drive home from practice thinking, I should have said this, I should have done this, yeah. I should have done this, but it's, a, but it's a note thing. I try to be remotely objective about it. I'm definitely not, and I'm still working on it, mm -hmm. you know, even going into the state tournament, but it's just something I've been learning. For one, you know, God has you where he has you, and you've got to be able to use what he's given you market what he's given you again to bring it back to all the way at the beginning of the episode when we were talking about that yeah you got to be able to market what he has given you to the people he has given you wow. and that takes relationship yeah. that takes knowing these people that takes doing life with these people i get oh gosh again six to eight hours maybe more than that a week with these kids that's a lot relative to some of the other relationships that i'd mm -hmm. had you know some to my chagrin because occasionally they get on my nerves but <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. um but it, again, reinforces, man, if you're going to minister to somebody, if you're going to lead somebody, if you're going to do life with them, if you're going to show somebody the gospel, you got to know them. Yeah. And you got to know Jesus. You got to know your material, too. You got to go back through the word. You got to go back through mm. um, prayer and just petition yeah. and thanksgiving and understand, God, I need to know who you are and I need to know who this person is so I can bring you two closer together, hopefully. And it's ultimately the spirit and all that lovely yeah. theological stuff at the end of the day. But man, it, it takes, again, working alongside the Lord. It's always him working through you. And he certainly doesn't need you. But you've got to be able to do everything within your power, yeah. within your knowledge of both your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with the people around you, and yeah. say, let's, let's put two and two together and figure out yeah. where this is going.